Hey folks, welcome to another Water Trek 360. Cayman Brac is known for its reefs, its wall dives, the wall cracks, and marine life. It's not really well known for shipwrecks other than the Keith Tibbets. On the West End, however, there are a couple of shipwrecks that may be of your interest, and we're going to take a look at those today. The Prince Frederick was a 110-foot wooden-hulled twin-masted vessel powered by both steam and sail. She sunk in the late 1800s. She is boat accessible and located on the south side of the island in 30 to 40 feet of water, not far from a local landmark called the Bubble House. Not much of her is left, some machinery, piles of anchor chain, and a couple of anchors. Since she's on the windward side, she's not dived often. The Kissimmee is a tugboat sunk as an artificial reef in 1982 in a large sandy area just off Scott's Dock, making it a popular and easy shore dive. It's a small wreck only 36 feet long and lies upside down in 50 feet of water next to a reef. It too is less often dive as ferry and barges use Scott's Dock, which complicates diving procedures. The East Chute in Cayman Mariner is another popular dive site on Brack on the northwest side of the island. The Cayman Mariner was a crew boat working the oil fields off of Louisiana, sunk intentionally as a reef in September 1986. The sponge-covered wreck now attracts turtles, eels, and the occasional schools of Barracuda. Years of storms have torn it apart. Farther down the channel, in the main chute, there is a photographic porthole remaining in a piece of wreckage about 100 feet or so away from the main body. This tiny little piece of wreckage gave me an opportunity to play with another type of camera that I use. It's an Insta1 360R. I like the 360 technology. Uh, it allows you the ability post-production to change the viewing experience. You can do Tiny Planet. You can look behind you. You can change where you want to go within the video uh, for things that you may not have seen because it's looking behind you while you are just looking ahead. In this particular video, I was unaware that a friend of ours was waving at us while I was focused on the camera. So, hello, no. The wreck had been pounded into little more than a shallow, small box with a main body of only 30 feet or so in length. Uh, you wouldn't go out of your way to dive this shipwreck, but it's a fun little dive breaking up the normal dive schedule of reef and wall. The wreck marks the beginning of a deep sandy valley that leads to the East Chute Wall. Starting at 45 feet, the chute disappears down into the abyss. The vertical face of the wall begins about 70 feet in large coral mounds surround the white sandy valley, rising to about 45 feet. Green tube sponge and orange elephant ear sponges decorate the wall. The Keith Tibbetts is by far the most well-known wreck on Cayman Brac. It is a world-class wreck. It, it is one of the favorite wrecks I've ever done. I'm not going to go completely into the wreck here. There is a full-length video on the Keith Tibbetts. The link will be in the description. Please check that out. The wreck of the Captain Keith Tibbetts is a 330-foot-long Brigadier Coney II class frigate built by the former Soviet Union. She sits in 60 to 100 feet of water northwest of the western end of Cayman Brac. She's not far offshore of the airport on a white sandy bottom. Although you can reach the wreck via a long surface swim of about 200 yards on a calm day, that's really a bit of a haul for the average diver, even on a calm day, and it's wiser to book one of the local dive boats at the Cayman Brac Beach Resort or the Southern Cross Club, which is located on Little Cayman. 
She split into two major portions. Uh, this was a result of Category 5 Hurricane Ivan in 2004, which literally ripped her in half. Her bow section points in a north-northwesterly direction, while the stern half is almost a true north-south, uh, with the actual stern part at the southernmost point. The bow section lies on its port side with a gentle downward slope to about 90 to uh, 95 feet. The stern sits in 60-65 feet with the deck at uh, 45 to 50. There is a short debris field between the two larger portions. The stern section is the most popular due to its shallower depths and can get a bit overcrowded. Uh, the turret guns make for great photo ops and can get queued up with people waiting to take their turn. Uh, there are several places to penetrate the wreck, not only in the stern, but in the bow section as well. Please use caution and have the necessary training and experience before doing so. My favorite wreck outside of the Tibbets is the Barbara Ann wreck, now called Preacher's Barge. This was an old LCM used for shipping supplies between the islands. She sits in 35 feet of water lying west of the old Buccaneer Inn Harbor uh, on northwest Cayman Brack. She was sunk in 1989 as a tourist dive site. She was an LCM that was used in service during the Korean War. It was left abandoned in a Tampa Bay boat junkyard. Uh, it was partially rebuilt and in pretty bad shape when it was bought in 1983 for $5,000 by bivocational pastor Reverend Lee King and Frank Lewis. She was rebuilt and reconditioned over a period of several months. She was loaded onto a transport ship and brought to Cayman Brack via Grand Cayman and renamed after Reverend Lee's wife, Barbara Ann. Her role was to fill a need for a regularly scheduled boat service between Little Cayman and Cayman Brack. She did this for four years. In 1987, with Hurricane Gilbert approaching, she was moved to South Sound near Diva Tiara Beach. It didn't help. She broke free of her moorings and beached near the hotel. After the storm, she was moved for repairs. Those repairs were not made as a new ferry service began and it wasn't cost effective to repair the Barbara Ann. So, instead, the dive center at Brack Aquatics arranged for her to be sunk as an artificial reef in 1989. There was no single design for the LCMs or landing craft mechanized. The British landing craft was conceived and tested in the 1920s and used from 1924 on. The British version had two loading doors, front and aft, uh, and was primarily for a tank landing craft. The American version of LCM-6 had a single front loading door. She had a length of 56 feet, a beam of 14, and could hit anywhere from 6 to 9 knots, carry 34 tons of military equipment, or 80 troops. They were later called Mike Boats in the Vietnam War and were fitted with two 671 diesel engines with 348 horsepower. The Barbara Ann, or Preacher Barge, is well spread out in the shallows. It has become its own little ecosystem and is packed with incredibly colorful sponges and sea fans and tons of invertebrate. Uh, lots of small fish species, uh, such as pufferfish, wrasse, and various blennies and gobies. Uh, this is one of the few sites where you'll always find juvenile queen angelfish and painted lady cleaning shrimps, and for this reason it is a favorite site of macro photographers for good reason. Her wreckage is spread out over several hundred square yards and there's plenty of room without photographers getting each other's way. With the exception of the 360 footage, this video is shot exclusively with an iPhone 13 Pro.
Reportedly, there's a resident sand shark that lives at the stern overhang. Uh, we didn't see it on this particular day, but maybe next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little clip on the West End wrecks of Cayman Brack. Do check out the full-length video on the Keith Tibbetts. The link will be in the description, as well as some of our other wreck videos. Do check out our product reviews on the GoPro Hero, Insta360, as well as the iPhone, and some of the housings that we've used. And as always, until the next time, go explore, get wet. Yeah.